I was created to be the world's most advanced and most beautiful, fully autonomous android. Japan just delivered fully performing female robots. The robot capital of the world reminds us times and again that it is in fact live and well and continues to come up with the most innovative advancements in robot technology. Let's dive right into the latest robot and AI news from Japan. Living human skin for robots. From action heroes to villainous assassins, biohybrid robots made of both living and artificial materials have been at the center of many sci-fi fantasies, inspiring today's robotic innovations. It's still a long way until human-like robots walk among us in our daily lives, but scientists from Japan are bringing us one step closer by crafting living human skin on robots. The method developed not only gave a robotic finger skin-like texture, but also water repellent and self-healing functions. The finger looks slightly sweaty straight out of the culture medium, says first author Shoji Takeuchi, a professor at the University of Tokyo, Japan. Since the finger is driven by an electric motor, it is also interesting to hear the clicking sounds of the motor in harmony with a finger that looks just like a real one. Looking real like a human is one of the top priorities for humanoid robots that are often tasked to interact with humans in healthcare and service industries. A human-like appearance can improve communication efficiency and evoke likability. While current silicone skin made for robots can mimic human appearance, it falls short when it comes to delicate textures, like wrinkles, and lacks skin-specific functions. Attempts at fabricating living skin sheets to cover robots have also had limited success, since it's challenging to conform them to dynamic objects with uneven surfaces. With that method, you have to have the hands of a skilled artisan who can cut and tailor the skin sheets, says Takeuchi. To efficiently cover surfaces with skin cells, we established a tissue molding method to directly mold skin tissue around the robot, which resulted in a seamless skin coverage on a robotic finger. Artificial Intelligence That Acts More Human A research group from the Graduate School of Informatics, Nagoya University, has taken a big step towards creating a neural network with metamemory through a computer-based evolution experiment. In recent years, there has been rapid progress in designing artificial intelligence technology using neural networks that imitate brain circuits. One goal of this field of research is understanding the evolution of metamemory to use it to create artificial intelligence with a human-like mind. Metamemory is the process by which we ask ourselves whether we remember what we had for dinner yesterday and then use that memory to decide whether to eat something different tonight. While this may seem like a simple question, answering it involves a complex process. Metamemory is important because it involves a person having knowledge of their own memory capabilities and adjusting their behavior accordingly. Smart Robot helps at Narita Airport. A robot equipped with artificial intelligence has been put to work to help sort out congestion problems at Narita International Airport near Tokyo. The robot is shaped like a small vehicle and stands about 1.2 meters high. The AI instantly analyzes images taken by its cameras. The robot can quickly grasp how and where congestion occurs. It gives instructions to keep order when it detects long queues blocking the way. The robot also keeps an eye out for suspicious items. It informs the command center when baggage is left unattended for too long. Yaigashi Akira of Narita International Airport says, We are trying to provide the world's best security and a safe, stable environment. Before the last Olympic and Paralympic Games in Tokyo, the airport deployed five robots equipped with cameras to improve security. This is the first time for it to introduce a robot with AI that helps deal with congestion. AI Surgical Robot for Kidney Stones Percutaneous nephrolithotomy is an efficient, minimally invasive, gold-standard procedure used for removing large kidney stones. Creating an access from the skin on the back to the kidney, called renal access, is a crucial yet challenging step in PCNL. An inefficiently created renal access can lead to severe complications including massive bleeding, thoracic and bowel injuries, renal pelvis perforation, or even sepsis. It is therefore no surprise that it takes years of training and practice to perform this procedure efficiently. There are two main renal access methods adopted during PCNL, fluoroscopic guidance and ultrasound guidance with or without fluoroscopy. Both approaches deliver similar post-operative outcomes but require experience-based expertise. Many novel methods and technologies are being tested and used in clinical practice to bridge this gap in skill requirement. While some offer better imaging guidance, others provide precise percutaneous access. 
Nonetheless, most techniques are still challenging for beginners. This inspired a research team led by assistant professors Kazumi Taguchi and Shuzo Hamamoto and chair and professor Takahiro Yasui from Nagoya City University Graduate School of Medical Sciences, Nephro-Urology, to question if artificial intelligence-powered robotic devices could be used for improved guidance compared with conventional U.S. guidance. Specifically, they wanted to see if the AI-powered device, called the Automated Needle Targeting with X-Ray, which was developed by the Singaporean medical startup NDR Medical Technology, offers better precision in percutaneous renal access along with automated needle trajectory. The team conducted a randomized, single-blind, controlled trial comparing their robotic-assisted fluoroscopic guided method with US-guided PCNL. The results of this trial were made available online on May 13, 2022 and published on June 13, 2022 in the Journal of Urology. This was the first human study comparing RAF with conventional ultrasound guidance for renal access during PCNL and the first clinical application of the Ant-X, says Dr. Taguchi. Robot Deity Preaches Buddha Scripture Every week, 62-year-old Miyuki Tanaka joins a pious crowd of Buddhists heading to the historic Kodaiji Temple in Kyoto, Japan. Inside the temple stands Mindar, a 6-foot-4-inch, 132-pound priest. With charismatic hand gestures and a piercing gaze, Mindar delivers a poignant sermon on one of the most read Buddhist scriptures, the Heart Sutra. The sermon is indistinguishable from the one given by the usual priest until visitors notice Mindar's smooth silicone skin, aluminum bones, and camera-embedded eyes. In this historic temple, Buddhists learn the teachings of Buddha from a humanoid, the robotic embodiment of the Buddhist goddess of mercy, Canon. I often experience mood swings taking care of my elderly mother. Mindar's sermons on the Heart Sutra help me control my emotions and bring salvation, Tanaka told media. In a country where two-thirds of the population identify as Buddhists, Tanaka is only one of the many with whom Mindar's sermons have resonated. Before listening to its sermons, worshippers view Mindar as a robot, but after, they perceive it as Buddha, not a robot, Kodaiji Temple's chief steward Tensho Goto says. Mindar was born in 2019 from a $1 million collaboration between Kodaiji Temple and a team led by Professor Hiroshi Ishiguro from the Department of Systems Innovation at Osaka University. Their goal was to enhance spiritual experiences and revive interest in Buddhism, which has been dwindling due to modernism and generational change in Japan. World's First Cyborg Dies A scientist dubbed the world's first cyborg has died aged 64. Peter Scott Morgan tried to become fully robotic to extend his life after he was diagnosed with motor neuron disease in 2017. Dr. Scott Morgan developed a lifelike avatar so he could smile after his face muscles failed, had a voice box fitted with his own recorded speech, used eye tracking technology to operate computers, and bought a top of the range wheelchair that allowed him to stand and lie flat. The pioneer also used a catheter and colostomy bag to use the toilet and had his larynx removed so saliva stayed out of his lungs. His family announced his death on his Twitter. Dr. Scott Morgan was diagnosed with amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, or ALS, a debilitating neurological disease that leads to loss of muscle movement. At the time of the diagnosis, doctors informed Peter he had two years to live. Refusing to give up hope, the robotics expert was convinced there was a way to beat the prognosis. Peter felt cutting-edge technology could extend his life. I wanted to reinvent for everyone what it means to be trapped in your own body, the scientist said. I'm lucky enough to be a prototype and neo-human, an early experiment in how humanity can make a huge leap into our future. Peter was the subject of NHK World Japan's The Man Who Turned Himself Into a Cyborg, which is available to stream on Flash. That's all for this video, folks. See you another time.